Hello everyone, my name is Cathy Dunley and I'm a therapeutic radiographer at the University College London Hospital. Today is the 14th of May 2021 and I have the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Palin, which will be featured on the Euro SIOP Europe Radiation Oncology website. Although myself and Pei have known each other for quite some time, I think it would be best if she was to introduce herself to you all. So over to you, Pei, tell us who you are. Hello everyone, um, my name is Pei Lim and I am now a consultant clinical oncologist at the University College London Hospitals. Um, I completed my training in London and went over to the Paul Scherer Institute for a year for a fellowship um, and I'm now back at UCLH. Um, my specialty sites are pediatric radiotherapy and molecular radiotherapy where I do treat some thyroid cancers and endocrine cancers as well. Fantastic. And today you're going to talk us through your higher research degree. Can you give us some background on this work? Yes. Um, this research degree was done um, at UCLH um, and was supervised by Dr. Mark Gaze, Dr. Jenny Gaines and Professor Gary Royal. Um, and part of this work um, also happened at the Porsche Institute, where I was supervised by Professor Damien Weber. Um, this work was also uh, uh, funded partially by the Little Princess Trust, which is a charity uh, making wigs for children. Um, this, uh, the, the, the project title was basically um, improving outcomes of children, teenage and young adults using proton beam therapy. Great. And could you please outline the aims of this work for us, Pei? Um, so when we started out, um, about three years ago, uh, the main aims were trying to find um, and investigate which patients uh, were suitable and would benefit from proton beam therapy for abdominal neuroblastoma patients. Um, very early on, we found that there were some patients who were suitable for proton beam therapy and some other patients would probably be more suitable for advanced photon techniques. Uh, moving forward from that, what we did was we delved deeper um, into why this was the case, um, and we investigated further into the uncertainties of proton therapy in the abdomen, um, the technical challenges that came with it, and strategies to overcome these challenges. Um, and for example, um, this included uh, looking at how bowel gas varied in children, and interestingly, we found that the younger children and the children under general anesthesia had more bowel gas variation, which was slightly unexpected. Uh, we looked at how respiratory motion was in very young children and how it affected proton beam therapy to symmetry. Um, and we looked at rescanning methods um, to overcome this. We also explored um, how vertebral dose would be affected with proton beam therapy as compared to advanced photon techniques. Um, and um, moving forward from that, with this knowledge and we hope that we'll be able to guide future patient selection for the best technique um, to be used for radiation for children with abdominal neuroblastoma. Great. And other than the one you just mentioned, do you have any other future directions for this topic in mind? Um, so right now we are working up a study in the UK um, to validate this hypothesis um, because whatever happens um, on paper and what we see on paper is actually very different from what um, actually happens on treatment um, on the machines. Um, so setting up a study would really allow us to collect important treatment data and also to validate that we can actually safely select these patients for um, either proton beam therapy or advanced proton techniques. Um, on another note uh, from this work, it also um, um, opened up more questions um, and some of that involves trying to improve um, the image guidance for pediatric patients, particularly in, in the abdomen region. Um, when we were using conformal 3D therapy, um, you know, the, the motion um, and um, the setup um, uh, it was very forgiving. Whereas right now when we're moving into very conformal techniques, we really need to be uh, very good in a setup for our little uh, children. 
So we're looking into um, investigating how surface guidance could guide this, uh, very low dose CVCTs, um, and also in collaboration with the imaging department at UCL, we are also looking at whether deep learning can improve um, the quality of the CVCTs and also hopefully in the future predict which patients would be affected by dosimetric changes because of changes in density or bowel gas um, uh, without relying on needing to recalculate every patient. Um, other work that we're doing and moving towards is also trying to improve the contouring uh, for uh, uh, pediatric patients coming through. Um, and this um, includes using very novel technology such as spectral CT, uh, very novel MR sequences, um, and just to see if we can be more conformal from another aspect. Um, and um, what we'll be working towards is looking to see if any of this can be correlated with uh, pathology, um, uh, thinking about future dose escalation or dose de-escalation uh, for these patients. So uh, plenty of very exciting work um, at the moment um, and hopefully will uh, be very fruitful in the future. Absolutely, definitely sounds really exciting. So in terms of UPay, what are your own personal ambitions for the next coming years? Um, so I hope to be uh, leading on uh, some of these projects um, uh, to get these studies set up um, and really in the long run uh, to continue working on improving the quality of pediatric radiotherapy from all aspects. Um, I think a very important component to this is to develop um, collaborations uh, and networking uh, for future work. That's great. And finally, is there any message or advice that you would like to share with the pediatric radiotherapy community? Um, so um, a, a real message um, that Mark Gates has always um, told me, uh, my mentor, um, is patience, optimism and resilience is what you really need in research, especially in the pediatric um, uh, radiotherapy um, uh, community, because we are we are working in a very um, rare subgroup of tumours. Um, we are always going to be challenged um, and there's going to be many hurdles that we're going to meet um, in our career. Um, but with uh, patients, we will get there. Uh, may not be quick, but we'll get there someday. Um, I think the bottom line is we really need to form strong collaborations, uh, be inclusive and um, collect outcomes um, uh, in the future, which would really guide the next generation of pediatric radiotherapists. That's great. Thank you so much, Pei, for joining us today and best of luck with all of your future work. Thank you very much.